It's your boy, the man, the myth, the legend, 44, the legendary. Back with another update, another video. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and cut to the chase here. When it seemed like the New Orleans Saints were not going to do anything in free agency, they finally made a couple of splashes. Uh, first and foremost, I think the obvious one that everybody's looking at. Um... Chase Young has been signed to a one-year deal worth $13 million, and um, there's going to be some uh, controversy there amongst fans and just NFL in general, considering he hasn't been able to play a full season. And speaking of, he uh, just got reported that he will be having neck surgery that will keep him out until training camp, which is in July. So, just to kind of add to that injury theory, he, uh, again, is um, hit with another injury-related event. So, that being said, I think um, I think it's good to have a, a, a what I'd consider to be a known name on the roster, What's up, Brandon? How you doing? I think it's good to, to have what I'd consider to be a known name on the roster, a guy that is capable of doing good things, a guy that is capable of being dominant. The biggest question is obviously, can you stay healthy? Can you actually play a good portion of the year? And that has yet to be determined. So far, not a great sign with him reporting that he will be having neck surgery and out up until training camp starts in July. Nonetheless, I'm not upset with the signing. I think it's 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 a good compliment to what we do with with Cam Jordan. Um, you know they can uh, share snaps, they can share reps, so that would be a good a good thing. And if he has success this year, maybe we sign him to a long term deal. Who knows? But anyway, we got him signed. Chase Young is on the roster. Cedric Wilson, the wide receiver, he played with the Dallas Cowboys. He played with the Miami Dolphins. He was, I don't even think you can say he was the number three with Miami. I, I, I don't know. You got Tyreek, then you got Jalen Waddle. Who comes after that? I guess you'd have to say Cedric Wilson. Um, not, not a bad signing. Uh, I'll say that much, but to me, it's an average signing. I mean, to me, Cedric Wilson is an average wide receiver. Not bad. He'll be productive. He'll make some plays. He'll do some good things for us. But, I mean, you, you got to be real. It's, it's, it's a 5 out of 10. It's, it's an average average signing. Uh, you can overanalyze and, and look for the pros and think about how this could potentially become uh, an absolute uh, – Stellar signing, uh, but you can't make a 5 out of 10 look like an 8 out of 10. So that's just the reality. But another depth piece to the wide receiving core. Cool. I'm just getting a report that the Saints just signed some random guy named Ola. Uh, I can't pronounce his first name. Udo. Ola something Udo. He played with the Minnesota Vikings for five seasons. Offensive lineman. Uh, he started 18 games, played in 43. Eh, I don't know, man. That's, uh, that's about two and a half seasons worth of uh, football. So the other two and a half seasons that he played, what has he been doing? Sitting on the bench. So it's, uh, that's an up-in-the-air signing. I don't know how I feel about that. I don't even know the guy. I, I know nothing about the guy. So we'll see how that plays out. And then you got uh, Willie Gay, I think his name is. From Kansas City, uh, a linebacker, if I'm not mistaken. I, I don't know his position, but we signed him too. So, cool. That's uh, The Saints have had what I'd consider to be an average free agency, very average free agency, especially considering that uh, you don't have much money to work with because you're always over the cap. And you're always scrambling to get out of cap hell every single offseason. Um, 
so there there you go. I don't know what's going to happen next. I don't know who they're going to sign next. I don't know who they're going to try to bring in. I don't I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen to Marshawn Lattimore. I don't know what's going to happen to other guys on their team. I don't know where Michael Thomas is going to go. None of that. I know nothing. What I will say is, um, and this has nothing to do with free agency, regardless of what happens in free agency. This is just a general expectation here, a general statement. The season, I'm not talking about football season. That, that, that's not for like five and a half months. <laughs> Nobody's worried about football season. Sit tight, enjoy your, uh, get comfortable, enjoy your uh, your summer or whatever. The next five months, spring and summer, enjoy yourself. Sit tight, be patient because football ain't nowhere near. Okay, I'm not talking about that. But I will say this as a general statement. The Saints have, and you can even make the argument that the Tampa Bay and Atlanta are better than us right now. But regardless of all that, the Saints have got to win the division next year if Dennis Allen wants to keep his job. I don't care what the circumstances are. I don't care who gets injured. I, I, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care if you go 9-8 and eight and you miss the playoffs barely again. I don't care. If the Saints don't win the division – and really win a playoff game, Dennis Allen, he needs to go, okay? We've been saying fire Dennis Allen for the last two years, but now you have a good observation. You have a good sample size. He's been here two years, okay? You got a terrible offensive coordinator, and regardless of if it was all his fault or not, Pete Carmichael is a terrible offensive coordinator, you had to deal with him for two years. Now you have uh, another another person. Now you got your guy. You got Clint Kubiak. I don't know how much experience he has as, as an OC. I think he's just a quarterback's coach, which I don't know. Good luck with that. But now you got another guy. You got another mind. You got another strategy in the building. There is absolutely no excuse for Dennis Allen this go-around. None. If the Saints don't make the playoffs and, and really win a playoff game, you got to go, dude. <laughs> you got to go. You got to go. You got to go. I don't want to hear, well, if we start 5-8 and eight and finish 9-8 and eight and barely miss, I don't want to hear none of that crap. No, no, you got to go. You got to go, dude. You got to get out of here. You have got to go. No questions asked. You got to go, dude. You have got to go. The Saints should have been what Tampa Bay was this past season. They went to the playoffs, won a playoff game, won the division, had a shot on the final drive, had one last shot on the final drive in the divisional playoff to go and tie the game and send the game to overtime and potentially go to the NFC Championship. Tampa Bay exceeded all expectations, and that should have been the Saints. Should have been the Saints. That's what we thought the Saints were going to do. But no, Tampa Bay did it. Well, Dennis Allen, if you don't do that this upcoming year, you got to go, dude. <laughs> That's it, man. I, and if you don't go, then obviously it, 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 it points up at the at the management. The management just doesn't care. Mickey Loomis. If, if Dennis Allen duplicates what he did last year and is not fired, I don't care what the circumstances are then Mickey Loomis needs to get fired. And if Mickey Loomis doesn't get fired, then Gail Benson needs to sell the team. <laughs> That's how I feel. I'm tired of playing around with this sample size. Oh, well, let's give it one more year. Let's give it one more year. No, 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 no. I'm getting older. I'm getting older. While I'm still young, I want to see the Saints do well. Okay? Is that too much to ask for? While I'm still in my 20s, I would like to see the Saints do well. So, yeah, Dennis Allen, you're gonna, you need to get fired. And I mean, I don't care whose fault it is. I don't care if it's the OC next year or whatever. Derek Carr, you need to get fired if we don't make the playoffs and win a playoff game. That's how I feel. I mean, dude, look at it. It, it, it was. It seemed like it was that easy for the Buccaneers. They go into the playoff. They they win the division. Our division's terrible. They win their wild card game. 
They go to the second round and come eight points short of advancing to the NFC Championship. Like, dude, you're telling me Tampa Bay, who who everybody thought was going to win like four or five games all year last year, can pull that off and put themselves in a position where they're eight points short of going to the NFC Championship, but the Saints can't even make the playoffs? Dennis Allen, you owe us big time, dude. This is it for you, dude. You had two chances. Third marks the charm. You don't get it done here, bro. You got to go. I don't I don't care whose fault it is. You have got to go if you don't get this team to the playoffs and at least win one playoff game. So, yeah, that's my thoughts on the, on the Saints. That's my thoughts on all this free agency and everything that, that's been going on. Um, it, it's an average free agency for the Saints this year. It's everything you'd probably expect with no money. What's up, Mr. Houdat? How you doing? Everything you'd probably expect with zero money to spend. And you know what? I don't care. I don't care if you have zero money to spend or if you can't acquire quality players or above average players here. If you don't make the playoffs and you don't win a playoff game next year, you need to get fired. Fired. There is no way that you should be getting overshadowed by Tampa Bay. A team that was projected to win five games all year long last year. And they win a playoff game. And they almost, almost make the NFC Championship. That is a slap in the face to us Saints fans. How does a team that's projected to get a top five draft pick win the division, win a playoff game, and nearly get to the NFC title game? How does that happen? But the team that was supposed to do all that doesn't even make the playoffs. I'm tired of defending Dennis Allen every year. If he doesn't get it done this year, you need to get fired. If Mickey Loomis keeps on defending him next year, and this happens again, he needs to get fired. And if Gail Benson doesn't have the freaking kahunis to get rid of either of them, she needs to sell the damn team. The citizens of New Orleans need to get together and buy this freaking team. That's what we need to do. That's what we need to do. So, that's my expectation. I don't care who you got starting at quarterback. I don't care who's injured. This, that, and the third. He said, she said, I don't care. (coughs) There's no middle ground here. No middle ground. It's all or nothing. You either get it done or you don't. So, I'm tired of this middle ground BS with the Saints. Trying to find the positives and everything. The glass half full. Like, I'm tired of that, dude. It's got You got to start looking at it with all or nothing mentality. You either get to this level or you don't. And if you don't, you got to suffer the consequences. If you do, you live to play another day. Oh, but let's look at the positives. Let's, let's, let's make something out of nothing. No, 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 no. Had enough of that. Had enough of it. Done. Dennis Allen, okay, you've had two bad years, okay? You've gradually improved from 7 and 10 to 9 and 8. Although you didn't make the playoffs, you've improved, okay? The only way you can improve here this upcoming year is by making the playoffs and winning a playoff game. That's it. There is no going 9 and 8 again and barely missing the playoffs. No, 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 no. I don't care who you got to play. I don't care if you got to play Kirk Cousins twice a year. I don't care if you got to play Tampa Bay and they're better. I, I, I don't care, dude. I don't. You made your bed, go lay in it. And if you can't, then you got to move. You got to move out. So, whatever. Those are my thoughts. Yep, Mr. Houdat, that's 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 my expectation too. That's my expectation too. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care what you got going on. I don't care who's injured. I don't care if uh, oh well, the Bucks had this going for them or the Falcons had this going for them. I I, I don't care. I don't. I do not care one bit. 
So, yep. Oh, by the way, while y'all are at it, Saints, go get a decent backup quarterback, please. Please. There is no way that Nathan Peterman can be the second string quarterback. If you're going to do that, you might as well have just kept Jake Hayner as the second string quarterback. Nathan Peterman threw five interceptions in one half of football. One half of football. Dude, you know how hard it is to do that? Throw five interceptions in one half of football? Yeah, Mr. Houdet, I, 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 don't, I, I don't see that happening. I don't think the Saints are going to. Jaden Daniels could be there for us to take at, what are we, 14th in the draft this year? Jaden Daniels could be there for us to take, and we still wouldn't take him. Which is dumb, but I mean, that's the Saints for you. That's Mickey Loomis. That's uh, Dennis Allen, or at least that's Mickey Loomis. That let me let me rephrase that. Mickey Loomis was good all throughout when he had. He was good because they covered his ass. But now that he doesn't have either of them, it's like you're showing how mediocre of a general manager you really are. I mean, the only thing you've been good for is getting us out of cap hell every single offseason, which is a struggle itself. I give you credit for that, Mickey Loomis, but other than that, dude, like your decision-making is just freaking like... Like, bro, I just, I don't get it. I don't get it. So, those are my thoughts. It's my opinion. And appreciate you all for taking the time to sit back and watch. Who that? I appreciate you, buddy. And uh, that's really all I got. Like I said, I, I it's cool to have Chase Young on the team. Seems like he really wants to be here. He is injury prone, so you got to keep that in mind. But aside from all that, he is a uh, he is um, a good player. He can make some things happen, so I am happy to have him on the team. Um, but in reality, it doesn't matter who you get in the off season because if the result that I talked about does not happen, then you need to get fired. Straight up, you need to get fired. Like, there is no excuse for the Bucks, a team that was supposed to win five games all year long. There is no excuse for them to, to, to nearly reach the NFC Championship game. The year where you were supposed to win the division and win a playoff game. There is no excuse for that to happen whenever you just don't put all this money into paying a quarterback and you don't even make the playoffs. There's no excuse for that. You got to make up for this year. So those are my thoughts. And I'll see you guys. Like, share, subscribe, whatever. Well, don't share. Nobody's going to take the time to watch this. Like, comment, whatever. I appreciate you guys, and I'm out. Peace.